I welcome everybody present here today for the Constitution Day program, organized jointly by the Department of History, Loretta College, and the Raja Ramon Roy Library Foundation, Kolkata. I invite Sister Christine Fatino, the principal of Loretta College, the chairman, Sri Kanchan Gupta, and the director general, Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava of Raja Ramon Roy Library Foundation, to please light the lamp. Thank you, Chairman Sir, Director General Sir, and Sister Christine. I request the Chairman of RRR LF to garland the portrait. I now request Sister Christine Katino to please solicit the Chairman and the Director General of RRR LF. I request the Director General of the Raja Ramayana Library Foundation to kindly address the gathering. Good afternoon to all of you. My regards and my best wishes to all of you. Honorable Principal of Dorito College, Honorable Chairman of Raja Ramayana Library Foundation, my dear students, my colleagues, I want to wish you on the 70th Constitution Day. It's a great uh, occasion, it's a great day. And some of you might be knowing that uh, uh, the tradition of observing 26 November started sometime in 1979. And then it came to be known as National Law Day, Rashtriya Kanun Divas. And it was in 2015, in fact on 11th of October 2015, when the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Sri Narendra Modi ji, when, she, when he was uh, laying the foundation of the Statue of Equality in uh, Mumbai, a statue in honor of uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, then he announced this would be called Constitution Day. The major aim of this is to, is to make students aware, all of us aware of the constitution. In fact, if you ever conduct a survey 
and find out from the student, even when they happen to come from political science or history, where they are supposed to know, they might not have read more than what the textbooks tell about constitution. It's a great, uh, great thing. And in fact, it's a supreme uh, law. And therefore, one of the things which we have to keep in mind is to familiarize the student with something called the constitution. Read it and try it. It's the longest constitution in the world, having more than 400 articles. But virtually everything is covered. It provides the framework, you know, in the background of which you can even look at issues like disability or the issues of uh, of the other, the other gender. So everything comes out of this from the basic text. So our aim is that. This is a year-long celebration. It starts from today and it will go till 20, 20th uh, November 2020. In this one year, what we should resolve that we would try to have as much understanding of the constitution as possible, understand each and every word and the way in which it has been written. It's a supreme text and perhaps as a footnote I can add here, that Dr. V. R. Ambedkar, the chairman of the drafting committee, it is said that he read at least 60 constitutions in different parts of the different parts of the world before he started working on, on this. It's a great text, great uh, in respect of its language, in terms of its understanding. So please resolve that you would be contributing to this, to its understanding, and for creating awareness of the constitution in the country, in your neighborhood, all around you, and at the Rajaram Memorial Library Foundation, is the first event which we are organizing. And I am sure that in times to come, we'll have more such events when we try to make the knowledge of the constitution, you know, spread all of us so that we all come to know about what So thank you very much and I'll be looking forward to hearing your views on the on the debate we have today. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and thank you sister for arranging such a I've never seen such a gathering of these students are so enthusiastic and so disciplined. One thing which impressed me about your college was that all the nights have been switched off. Generally what happens? Because we are familiar with uh, those those contexts where the lights keep on working even when there is no one there. So this is a great thing which has really impressed me and for us we will try to emulate that in our institution. Thank you very much. Great. I now request Sister Christine to say a few words as well. Today we the Constitution's Day and I welcome the Director General, Chairman of the Rajaram Mohan Library Foundation and Ministry of Culture to this college and to this program. Visitors, guests, teachers, students, today is a very special day for us. Every organization that is committed to a course has a constitution. We in the Rento, our sisters, also have a constitution. The ours is much smaller than our Indian constitution. But understanding our constitution, our own small constitution, the Jesuit constitution which we have adopted, has helped me understand the depth, the far-sightedness of Dr. D. R. Ambedkar, when he formulated our own constitutions, considering how versatile we are here in India. So I have just requested that we take this year seriously, 12 months hence, in reading our constitutions, understanding them, teasing them apart for understanding so that we really get into the very core between words for understanding our constitution and making it a part of our system, our genes. Hope you are
Incidentally, this is also the 150th birth anniversary of the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. I've had great regard for this man. I've had the privilege of visiting his ashram in Varga. And that's when my regard for him grew. Yesterday, they are keeping a year long celebration of Mahatma Gandhi as well. Yesterday, our women said there was a beautiful and a scintillating program on Mahatma Ji. The BA students, history students were there with us, third year students, and we just sat in control as to how they picked up small things for Mahatma right? and brought it to reality before us. Something we'd never heard of. And I just said, here is the father of our nation. And today I say, here is the father of our constitution, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. My dear students, we will understand over the course of the year, just as we are keeping Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary this year, with small programs all through the year, we shall do something for our constitutions too, so that we become a part of our genes, of our genetic, of our DNA, of our genetic heritage, of our DNA. Yes? It's a beautiful volume if you understand the depth of the constitutions. And I wish each one of you all the best as you produce these constitutions, make them a part of you, let them get into your system so that you can emulate what the constitution is put us. I wish today's program all the best. I pray for God's blessings. May the Lord who hovers with us and over us, who is our inspiration and our guide, on whom we depend and on whom we cannot do without, be with us today and through the year as we understand the depth that our constitution offers us and what beautiful lives we lead the need of fellowship and communal harmony if we were to take our constitutions seriously. We pray that the Lord may guide us so that these constitutions will become a reality in our lives, in this college, in the state, in our country. And among all those diaspora living in other parts of the world. May the Lord grant our prayers. May the Lord bless our endeavors. Amen. The inaugural session for today's program now comes to a close. We will take a short break in order to prepare for the debate. We thank you all for being here today.
Look at the camera, please. Man. As a full time fellow in 2013 and 14, she gave talks to Indian culture and society to students of high school in New York and New Jersey. She also serves as a volunteer teacher for Vivek Mani, an Indian school for inner city children for, from disempowered backgrounds. We are grateful for your presence today, ma'am. I would now like to introduce our moderator for the session. Dr. Sukanya Mitra is an assistant professor in the Department of History. She is associated with several organizations working on the conservation of heritage and is currently on a fellowship for a project called Connecting Local, which tries to connect art with community practices. I now request our moderator to take over the proceedings. Thank you for a uh, lovely introduction. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank my department, the Department of History of Oriental College, Kolkata, for giving me this opportunity to moderate today's debate. I am sure it is going to be a very exciting debate. The motion for the debate today is fundamental rights have taken precedence over fundamental duties in contemporary India. And on both sides, I find very enthusiastic participants who will be talking for as well as against the motion. On my left is the team who is going to talk for the motion, and on my right is the team who is going to defend the motion. Uh, talk against the motion, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just uh, say a few things about the rules for this debate, so that everybody is aware of them and there is no ambiguity. Each speaker is allowed to speak for three minutes, at the end of which there will be one bell, the first bell, and then there will be a second bell after one more minute. So a total of three plus one minutes will be allotted to each speaker. Rebuttals and refutations will be a part of each speaker's speech and I uh, sort of request the judges to make note of that. A bell will be rung, as I said, at the end of three minutes and a final bell at the end of the total of four minutes. Speakers exceeding the time limit will be penalized. So I request all the speakers to kindly speak to the time. The speakers will be marked on the basis of content and relevance, style, delivery, and of course, rebuttal and refutation, with the exception of the first speaker of the, uh, of the uh, side speaking for the motion, because she will not have anybody to rebut or refute. The judge's decision will stand finally. So I hope... Uh, all the, the teams, the participants are clear about the rules and we also have a bell keeper and the two actually there so they will keep a strict vigilance on the timer. So please stick to the timer. Uh, to begin, I will request the first speaker speaking for the motion, Eliza Zaman, who belongs to History Honours third year, to please put forward her speech.